you start to think of. I mean, it's, when I was a child, if somebody would have told me that you could fly an airplane, I wouldn't have believed it. Nobody would tell you that the Israeli Air Force is the equal, if not better, than any other Air Force in the world. So today we accept that as being fact. The whole world accepts it as being fact. Um, you have a piece of Israel in every one of your phones. Uh, Israel, uh, whatever, whatever it wants to do, it can do. But the Lord gave us natural gas. So as uh, one of our politicians Famously put it, we always had hot air, but now we got natural gas. <laughs> <laughs> what a gift. Israel is uh, energy uh, independent. Uh, Turkey is going to buy, is uh, buying, and Jordan is going to buy, and uh, Egypt is going to buy. How did that happen? And uh, a lot of the great things that happen seem to happen uh, in spite of ourselves, not because of ourselves. Almost serendipitously, almost uh, by accident. Because Rabos Machshobos Belevish Vatsas Hashem Yisokun. The Lord apparently has a plan here. And it's very strange that God's plan does not necessarily conform to our preconceived ideas as to how things should work and that how things should proceed. That's part of Ha'inu Kecholim. It's a dream. In the midst of a dream. Some people find the dream more pleasant than others. Other people find the dream unpleasant because it does not fit their preconceived notions. That's the problem of the left in the world. They have a notion as to how society should look. And they're angry that uh, somehow uh, Israel is not their society. And then uh, there are other Jews who have a preconceived notion as to uh, how God should bring about the salvation of the Jewish people and if he has uh, the temerity to do it in a way that's different than the way they wanted it to so that they quit. They don't want it. But all of that really are fringe problems and because the main issue is how will the state develop what kind of value system and value life it will adopt, how Jewish it will be while remaining uh, democratic. That's a great issue. And that issue, again, will not go away rapidly or easily. But it is being addressed. There are many things that are being addressed in Israel that are below the surface. Uh, the problem with the Haredi workforce uh, is slowly changing. We have more and more Haredi uh, in the workforce. You even have more and more Haredi in the Israeli army. In the Israeli army, they were signed almost exclusively to intelligence. A, because they're intelligent, and B, because it promotes less problems. But eventually, you have to come to a solution there also, because not everybody can be an intelligence. And uh, these are ongoing problems, day in and day out, of a changing society. Of how many we are attempting to build it, and the problems that we face. American Jewry uh, is, uh, yeah, I said, uh, an example. I'll repeat it again here. Uh, the Shabbos Holomoy, there is a uh, great off door. 
the Avtor of the Novi Yechevsko. And the Novi Yechevsko has a vision and he sees a valley of dry bones. And uh, the Lord asks him in the vision, uh, Will these bones be uh, ever revived? And the Novi doesn't know what the answer is. He says, You're the only one that knows I got one. What am I going to do with the dry bones? And then the Tarach describes for us uh, that the uh, bones start to line up, they become human skeletons, and the skeletons uh, become dressed in uh, flesh and in muscle and sinew, skin, and then a great wind comes and infuses in them life. And they stand up. And the Novi uh, hears the voice from heaven that says, That's the Jewish people. So the Gemara in Sanhedrin, as is its warrant, the Gemara asks a simple question So, what happened afterwards? You got 30,000 people that stood up. What happened to them? Because in Tanakh it doesn't say what happened to them. Maybe you're calling. <laughs> <laughs> so the Gemara gives two opinions which is uh, one of the great uh, lessons of the Talmud, is that there's always another opinion. So one opinion is, They stood on their feet, they recited the Hallel, that the great miracle of being revived, and then they all dropped dead again. That's it. One time shot, one time miracle, Done. Omar Rabbi Yehuda ben Seira al-Ragot, the great Rabbi Yehuda ben Seira stood on his feet and he said, Chas v'chalila to say that. It's blasphemy to say that. No sunoshim, they got married. Yoldu boni, they had children. Vanimi b'nei b'nei I'm descended from that. And a proof of the matter, I have my Zaynas fill in my hand. So you have here two opinions. One opinion is that they all drop dead. Goodbye. And the other opinion is, what are you talking about? We're their children. So some sofer says uh, that both opinions are correct, as is usually the case in the Gemara and in life. It just depends on how you apply it. There are Jews that are revived and they drop dead again. After the Shoah, the Jewish people were revived. The point of Fisherov told me the famous, his famous uh, parable. He said that, God forbid, the parents have a child that's very ill and they take the child to the hospital. And after, after all sorts of miraculous things, the child is able to come home and is on the road to recovery. So then the parents say to the child, you want ice cream every day, we'll give you ice cream. You want toys, you want toys, whatever, what, you know, whatever. For a period of time, whatever the child wants, the child gets. After a while, the parents realize that that will ruin the child, so then they go back to being the normal mean parents that are supposed to be. So he said, after the Shoah, the Jewish people came out of the hospital. 
I remember uh, what 1947 and 48 looked like in Chicago. I remember uh, when my usher came to my father's house to tell us how my uncle and aunt and my cousins were all killed by the Bolsheviks in 1940 in Lithuania. Ain't buyers, everybody. But we had no spirit, we had nothing. And the state of Israel came. So he said, so the Bolshev said, you want a state, I'll give you a state. You want money, I'll make you the most affluent community the Jewish world has ever seen. You want whatever you want, you can have. But it's only for a limited time. The window is not permanently open. So most of the Jewish world, or a great proportion of the Jewish world, dropped dead again. That's what it is, said. Uh, you look at the uh, and all the fearsome statistics today, and you look around, it's, it's frightening. Gone completely. You don't know what you're talking about. The people in the book have no idea what book you're talking about. And on the other hand, against all odds, and against all prevailing currents, uh, the Torah world rebuilt itself in a way that is unimaginable 40, 50, 60 years ago. In uh, 1953, I accompanied my father to Lakewood, New Jersey. My father wanted to visit Rabbi Kutler and Aaron Kutler, Zayvatari, the Russian group from Europe. So we went, so then the uh, Lakewood the BMG was in a ramshackle farmhouse and the office was on the like, You had to climb up a staircase that you didn't think you'd survive, or the staircase would survive. And he had 27 students in the issue. So my father asked him, I remember I was uh, 53, I was 16, something like that. Uh, so he, he asked him, uh, uh, how many students does Rashi Shiva think language will have? So he said, 50, if sure I wondered. 50, maybe 100. So there's another Arvin Cutler in Lakewood today, whom I know. So he told me, well, uh, we're about 9,000 on the books now. He's trying to get to 10,000 so that he can qualify as a university and that uh, the American government will have the great chalik and support each other. <laughs> Who imagined such a thing? Mimi Leili Avraham, Mediko Bodin Sora. How could such a thing be? But we take it for granted. I spoke uh, last week uh, in Yeshiva University in, the, in their new base marriage. Unbelievable. Who would I know? Because I, I had been in Yeshiva University for decades, uh, on and off to visit and hear Shiurim, etc. So uh, even Rabbi Salavechik spoke, so he had 200 people, 300 people. So 
at the Tabriz, uh, there were about 300 men uh, at the Tabriz, and about uh, four of them or five of them, you could tell, were from the generation. They didn't have to film, and they didn't quite know how to wear a yarmulke correctly. <coughs> And they put out the old silk towers. But I remember when it was reversed. Well, there weren't so many people that put on the show. But nobody wore a towel as well. So it's a changing time. And a, lot, a great deal of that change is due to the fact that the state of Israel exists because it pumped life back into the Jewish people. And that's why it's so important that we understand that and appreciate it and be grateful for it. But we have a lot of problems. We have Iran and we have Hezbollah and we have Hamas. I mean, the Lord has sent us a full point. But uh, my uh, Arab street cleaner, whom I meet every morning on the way to Shul, had a great story about him that uh, one year uh, for uh, Mishloach Monos, people uh, sent us uh, a very expensive box of bells and chocolates. which is, I'm certain, what Queen Esther had in mind. And uh, I did search as I could. I could not find any rabbinic certification to the product. So I said, uh, I said to Jack, I said, you know, I see Ahmed every morning on the way to Shul, I'll give it to him. So I, I'm going to Shul in the morning, and I see him, I said, morning, go to So I said, you know, I, I have a present for you. I gave him a box of chocolates. He says to me, what's wrong? It has a laugh shirt. So we understand each other. We really do. And the distance is not that great. The uh, leadership is very poor. But the average... Uh, took a poll of uh, Arabs in East Jerusalem if they want to join the Palestinian Authority. 88% said no. And the man on the street is not is not as uh, hateful to us as represented. But it's like starting to sort this out. He made a lot of mistakes on the way. He paid for mistakes. But overall, the situation is much better. You know, Bismarck was once asked, well, what was the difference between Germany and Austria? So he said, uh, the uh, situation in Austria the situation in Germany, he said, is serious but not hopeless. Whereas the situation in Austria is hopeless <coughs> but not serious. Our situation is serious but not hopeless. We have great opportunities, both here and in Eretz Israel, to rebuild the Jewish people. But then we have to realize the forces <clears throat> that we have to contend with. It's very hard to be a Shomer Shabbos when everybody's texting. It's very hard to appreciate what Shabbos is. Um, Pesach, uh, I don't mean to be unkind, but uh, Pesach has been drowned in uh, becoming a vacation and an escape. And, uh, you have an entire generation of Jews that think Pesach is a hotel. They don't remember a grandparents' Pesach. They don't remember uh, 
those ideas. So we have our problems, uh, that's good. But without problems, there's no life. But we should be of good hope because we've come a long way in 70 years. Very long way. And uh, by uh, renewing our strength, by revitalizing our spirit, by remaining uh, strong and adamant in our value system and what we believe in. The Romans disappeared. The Greeks disappeared. This society will also disappear. It has to. It always has. And perhaps there are changes in America already. There's no question that uh, the last election is a change, but how to sort it out, no one knows yet. And if we are uh, what we are supposed to be, I can't uh, speak for God. I will say that he hasn't spoken to me in the last two weeks, so I don't know. But uh, I think that uh, what we have seen until now will continue. And that we'll be privileged to see great and good things in the future. Because I will say, the Nisa Migalu, the Nisa Nasirim we got. The Jewish people will redeem the ones, so they'll be redeemed again. But we'll have to do it. We have to do our part. We can't just sit back and wait for it to If you just sit back, so that's the ones that drop dead. And uh, I uh, really appreciate the fact that I had a chance to unburden myself here this morning to you and to share a few ideas. I want to bless each and every one of you, my dear friends, for uh, all of the uh, wonderful years that we had together. When it happens, you don't appreciate it. Later, you can't say thank you. But uh, I appreciate it, and we should hear good news from each other, and come see us in your shalom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that'll be wonderful. Yes, yes, yeah, sure. Where is he? I thought you went back to Colombia. What happened? Yes. Everything was wonderful. And you came back here. I came back here. With the My family is, is coming soon. Good. Awesome.